Now, someone leaves this conference and they say, I don't know, chemicals don't seem so good, and they tell their friend, their spouse, their someone, and that person responds, what are you gonna do? You can't feed the world without chemicals. We have to use chemicals. It's the only way to grow enough food. Yes. So what, yeah. do, what do we do? Well, that's not true. We don't need chemicals to grow food. In fact, there have been studies by the UN. There was a study by University of Michigan. There have been studies that show we don't, we don't need chemicals to feed the world. There's more food in the world. There's food enough in the world now to, to feed 14 billion people. The problem is access to food, not growing food. There's more of a problem with obesity in the world than starvation. And I think that we've proven now that people can grow even a couple thousand acres of wheat organically on one farm. We can feed the world with agroecological methods, mm -hmm. and, and we've proven it. And I think we just need to insist on that and not let the, the and most GMOs, which use, you know, the things that, most GMOs that use, they use, they're meant to be sprayed with chemicals, they don't feed people. The worst food that we use the most chemicals on don't feed people. They feed cars and cows mm -hmm. and they create corn sugar, corn syrup. So that is absolutely not true. And I think that we need to support organic and agroecological methods and we have to stop uh, subsidizing the chemical industry and the agricultural industry and we have to stop destroying our soil or we'll be out of soil within the next 20 or 30 years. And it's absolutely not true that we can't feel, feed the world organically. They've proven it over and over and over again, and we need to just insist that people pay attention to the scientists that have done these studies and not the corporations that are trying to sell us their terrible products. One, one of the loveliest experiments I, I've seen was they divided a, a large piece of land into plots, and they sort of then spread at random a whole bunch of seeds and it turned out that the plot that was the most robust was the one that had the most uh, variety, the most seeds yeah. there. So nature thrives on uh, abundance and different species and, and so on. Maybe you know more about that. Right, that's true. And I think we need to get back to smaller farms. What's happened in the, there was a deliberate campaign on the part of the government it was called Get Big or Get Out in the 70s mm -hmm. to get rid of small family farms and turn them into giant corporate farms that had you know, $2 million compounds and using lots of chemicals and lots of fertilizer. But we go back to smaller family farms, which is a huge movement in the United States and all over the world. Mm -hmm. People want to, young people, they want to go back and have these small farms that feed the community and feed their families. Mm -hmm. People are growing gardens in cities and in their backyards. We can do it. It's the most exciting part of the food industry, the food world today, is these smaller farms where you know the people growing your food, and you, you like that food, you choose that food, it's part of your life. Kids go to these farms and get interested in farming and things growing. It's a wonderful, wonderful thing to do with your time. You get off the internet, go out there, grow something, go to a farm, support people that are growing things organically. This is what people want. It's what people want. It's a natural thing. We as humans want to get our hands in the soil. We want to walk on soil with our feet. And, and it's possible now to do it. And this is what our government should be supporting and subsidizing instead of fighting. And I think we just have to insist on it. And this is something that, you know, we can't, we, it's very difficult to change a lot of the things that we feel are wrong in the world today, but we can choose what we eat, mm -hmm. and we can choose where we get that food, and that's something that's happening already, and we just need to strengthen that movement so that the alternative just falls away. Monsanto just falls away because no one's supporting it. They just, they just go bankrupt and out of business. This is a little off subject, but it's poignant because it's timely. Just today, a report came out. In this country, by the way, uh, we have a reported $7 trillion deficit. Just today, it was reported since the first Iraq war and terrorism, we have spent and will spend $4.8 trillion on killing and war and fighting, as you say. And if we can't take several billion dollars and start to be pro-health, pro-biology, pro-nature, pro-human, uh, we will not survive as a species. There we go. So, if you would each take 60 seconds to make any closing thoughts that you'd like to make. Start with you. 
This has been a very good <coughs> This has been a very exciting and moving discussion. Um, I, I, I always, I always think that that research is, uh, being a researcher myself, that research is critically important. And um, in one of the areas I, I like to reiterate is it, it, for our health, especially, is the water that we drink. And if I can make make one comment on this, I, I would say that. The, the uh, people granting the money ought to be alerted to the fact that it's really important to, to study ad adequately the, the water, the type of water and the effect it has on our health. And um, I can say that in, in my own experience and, and those of my colleagues, the people at the, for example, National Institutes of Health and elsewhere, they almost never heard of the word water. They heard of genes, they heard of DNA, they heard of proteins, but water, which makes up two thirds <laughs> of our, our body is, is something that seems absolutely foreign to them. And 50 years ago, people knew that, that water was, was central for, for health. For example, the, uh, the great Nobel laureate, the father of modern biochemistry, uh, Albert St. Georgie, who won the Nobel Prize for discovering twice, twice did he? Yeah. Oh, vitamin well. C. Vitamin C, yeah, I didn't know he wanted it. What did I he win it? So. No. Yeah. Are you yeah. thinking of Linus Pauling? No, I think St. George did. Did he? Too. Okay, anyway, uh, one, of the, one of his famous quotes is, life is, is water dancing to the tune of solids. So mm. he knew that, that water was absolutely central for everything. And it seems that as scientists have pulled apart the cell and the molecule and the parts of molecules to study them, they lost sight of the matrix that it surrounds all of these, these structures. And only now are people beginning to, to go back to understanding how critical the water is for practically every function in your body. If you, if you count the number of molecules, if you line up all the molecules in your body and you count them one by one, 99 out of 100 are water molecules. The water molecules are so small, and to fill that two-thirds volume, are a lot of water molecules. So how arrogant it is to think that 99% of your molecules do nothing but sit there and bathe the more important molecules of life. So we need to return to water. We need to return to studying water and understanding how important the water is for every aspect of our function. Um, I'm not suggesting that water fluoridation is the most important issue discussed at this conference. I think GMOs is far more important. But I would say it's the easiest problem to fix. All you need is a strong wrist to turn off a tap at the public waterworks. To get that turning of the wrist, we need more people educated. I hope you will help. The three messages I leave with in most of my talks around the world is one to citizens. Don't let the experts take your common sense away. They That's will if they can. <laughs> Secondly, to politicians. Start putting your faith back in people. Stop running to high pay consultant and magic machines. And thirdly, to activists, very important, very, very important, have fun. Exactly. You, even though these issues are grim, mm -hmm. you've got to keep going. You can't burn out. And so you've got to enjoy what we have. What we have is a great movement, a grassroots movement. You're here not because to make money. You're not here for political power. You're here for your children, your grandchildren, your community, and possibly the planet. You're working with fabulous people in this grassroots movement. Enjoy that. Tonight we've talked about how horrible chemicals are and what we should be against. I'd like to change that chapter and rather than being against something, if you're really, really, truly for yourself and for others, you just won't make bad choices. Mm -hmm. So start focusing not on the negative, but more the positive, you. Love yourself, respect yourself, do the best you can all of the time, and these problems will go away. My favorite book, Eric Fromm. Eric Fromm, The Art of Loving. Well, I always say, and, and I know, because uh, for f more than 40 years I worked in the field of natural health care, and 
the, our bodies are very forgiving. So it's just waiting for us to wake up and start eating well, drinking good water, taking care, start walking every day, go lift weights or lift your kids and, <laughs> you know, it, it start using your body like the tool it was meant to be. It wants to be moved. It really, it doesn't want to sit. We would have a totally different body if we were supposed to sit. So we have these legs and this long body and the head on the top and <laughs> we're, we're walking on two legs and we're supposed to walk, we have to go back to walking. We're supposed to walk long distance, miles and miles every day. That's what we were supposed to do. So, you know, our bodies are forgiving. You start doing that for yourself, it comes back. And our environment is forgiven. And you can see, once we stop uh, using chemicals in one area, how fast the nature comes back and how willing it is. And yes, soil will take hundreds and hundreds of years to get back, but we can nourish that soil. So now if I have compost, and I should use everything in my household to make compost, you know, and if you live in a, an apartment, then save it and then go out when nobody sees you and put it around all the trees in your neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> and enrich and, and that tree so be really, really happy. And, um, you know, so realize it's all about forgiving. And, you know, when it comes to Monsanto and GMO, then now we're being brainwashed that the world is going to need it because we're going to be nine billion people soon and how are we going to feed ourselves? Don't go for that. And it doesn't, the crops that GMO is giving is nothing compared to what an organic farmer or biodynamic farmer can do. Plus the quality. We don't talk quantity anymore. We talk quality. So that's, um, that's the deal. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> When I was halfway through making a film I made on soil that I'm going to be presenting tomorrow called Symphony of the Soil, mm -hmm. and I was trying to, I was revisiting the idea of photosynthesis that I first learned about, what, in, I don't know, third or fourth grade or something, and I was trying to figure out how to present this in the film, and at some point I realized that photosynthesis is a miracle. Mm. It's a miracle that you can take sunlight mm. and a plant can turn it into carbon that we end up ultimately feeding our bodies and creating our bodies and creating our children with that. That life is a miracle. Mm -hmm. And I think we need to do what we can to remember that every day when we look out to appreciate the beauty in the world, to appreciate our friendships, to appreciate our bodies, to appreciate skin, which is a miracle in itself, and to really realize that, that this is a, an incredible planet. And this is, America is an incredible country. We, ha we are so blessed in this country of all our resources and we're wasting it. And I think we don't wanna, I think that to me, that's what I try to do and try to help people do is to move beyond cynicism to a place of honest action and to appreciate uh, to appreciate that um, the future is in our hands. Because if we don't make the changes we need to make and help those changes sustain themselves in the world beyond our lifetimes, that we won't, we won't have, it won't be here. This, this planet, it will be a dead planet. So I think that uh, this is a very important time and that um, gatherings like this, where we can get together and meet, meet like-minded people and feel like we're doing something important to help. You want to help. I think it's such an important thing, so I want to thank you all for being here, and especially thank you, Steve, for making it possible for us to be here today. Well, there's not a lot to say uh, left, I guess, because these people have all said it very eloquently. I think one of the things that all of us up here uh, are is curious. And I think that's, that's what I want to leave everybody with. I think you've got to feed your curiosity. And, and if you feed your curiosity, you figure things out, you change your mind, you get to the answers. And when you get to the answers, you get to the truth. And when you get to the truth, then you're where you need to be.